Hey everyone, uh, Jeremy here. It is Thursday night and uh, we're going to create some art. I always have trouble remembering what day it is, uh, but I always figure it out eventually. Um, so uh, welcome to uh, my channel. Uh, happy Thursday. A uh, couple of house cleaning or housekeeping things, whatever the, the, the uh, kids call it. I, I think it's a uh, housekeeping. Yeah. A couple of housekeeping things. Um, We've been talking about that auction for the um, the bourbon bottles uh, that I had a chance to decorate for on behalf of uh, LexArts. Uh, that auction is going on right now. Uh, I posted a link to it in the uh, in, on the community tab, so you can go in there and um, you can check out some of the other bottles that other people have uh, made. Oh, okay, uh, yeah, Larry's already checked it out. Cool. Um, oh, I guess I should do a shout out real quick. Uh, hey, Rome Dog. Uh, hey, because I can. Hey, uh, kid, and hey, Larry. Um, I think that's everybody. Yeah. All right. So anyway, uh, that auction is going on right now. I posted a link to it in the uh, community tab. You guys can go and check out some of the other bottles. I have to say my bottle is not the best. There are some awesome bottles out there. People really, really uh, came out, um, in support of this, um, this fundraising event. Um, all, all the money goes to a good cause. It goes to Lex Arts, uh, which, uh, supports, um, art programs in the Lexington area. Um, it's how basically artists connect and, and do, um, do good works. So it's for a good cause. I encourage you guys to check out lexarts.org. Uh, but, um, I don't want to spend too much time on, uh, talking about this because I am going to post a video about it tomorrow. I, uh, went down there earlier today. Um, they had kind of like an artist meetup where we all got to meet each other. Um, and, uh, that was pretty cool. So I took a bunch of, um, photos and, and video, not, not like a lot. It's probably going to be a short video, but I did want to like actually turn that into a video. So I'm going to post that video tomorrow. So, uh, we can talk about it then, but in the meantime, what are we working on tonight? So I was looking at all of my pictures back here and I was like, man, that is like, that's a lot of black and white there. Um, there's not a lot of color at all. So I wanted to do something uh, like colorful for a change. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to draw a horse, uh, but I'm going to draw it in uh, colors that you wouldn't expect. In fact, uh, if I go to the full view here, this is going to be my limited color pa palette. Uh, as you can see, there's no brown. Uh, there is no brown going to be in this horse. I'm going to draw it in uh, blues and greens and Hopefully uh, that looks okay because that's uh, that's the plan. That's all I got for tonight. Uh, and then, you know, I, I like this as kind of like an accent color. So somehow this yellow is going to go in there, but very sparingly. That's just going to be an access color, uh, accent color. Most of the horse is going to be in these uh, blues and greens. And we're going to see how it goes. It's gonna, I, I think it's going to be kind of cool. But, um, you know, you guys don't care. You're just here to chat and hang out with me and, and things like that. I see Tom's in the room. We got a bit of a party going on here. This is awesome. I got my bourbon, got my uh, Geppetto watching. I'm just going to draw this horse. So I'll, I'll get started here in a moment. But, yeah, um, if you get a chance to check out not just my bottle. My bottle. My bottle's pretty cool and everything. I I got a couple of compliments on it. I think um a couple of people were surprised that it was uh, made out of coffee, um, because unfortunately, like, and I guess this is just a limitation of their. Well, it's not a limitation of their system. I, I think they can do better. Um, they didn't. They didn't add like a description to these bottles or anything like that. They just added the name, so it's not one hundred percent apparent that it is a. Um, uh, made out of coffee, which kind of sucks. I, I wish that uh, they could do better on that. Maybe, maybe I'll suggest that, like if they ever do this again. But um, yeah, some people were like surprised to uh, to hear that mine were made in coffee. Um, you know, because they could be watercolor. I mean, when you look at them, that you could look at them and be like, well, this might be watercolor and stuff like that. But they are not. They are in fact coffee. In fact. Um, it was really kind of cool uh, going down there and, and meeting with the um, other artists and stuff like that, because, you know, uh, some of them knew each other. I didn't know any of them. Like, I'm not <laughs> I'm not that that social. Um, so I hadn't gotten the chance to uh, meet any of these people before. So it was definitely kind of interesting to uh, run into them and be able to talk to them um, today. Uh, hold on. I'm going to switch this light. I was just thinking it's a little bit dark in here, especially if I'm doing something in color. Uh, so sorry about that. Um, yeah, so it was kind of cool. And um, it, it's it's kind of funny because uh, I was showing my work to this lady who I had never met before. And it turns out she actually did the bottle, one of the bottles that I liked the most. Um, it was a bottle done in watercolor of a horse. You know, there's a lot of horses in there. If you go in there and look at those uh, bottles, like, 
I don't know, at least half of them are horses, but that, that's just where we live, you know? Like, like I said, not everybody's into horses and stuff, but I have to be able to draw horses just because of where I live. Um, if I can't draw horses in this town, I can't be an artist. <laughs> it's like if you live by the sea or something and, and you just like have, like you just hate uh, seascapes, you're not gonna last very long. So I have to be able to draw horses. Um, anyway, so she had done a horse in watercolor and it's kind of funny. She had come up to me um, and and uh, she asked me like, uh, which one was mine? And I'm like, oh, it's this one over here. Uh, I did in coffee and she's like, oh, coffee. Wow, that's amazing. And she's like, uh, what kind of ground did you use? And I'm like, what kind of ground did I use? And I thought she was talking about the coffee. And I'm like, I, I don't know, like just fresh ground. <laughs> but apparently she was talking about this, this thing called um, uh, watercolor ground. And uh, I didn't, I didn't know about this. I, I didn't know that this is kind of like um, that gesso that I've used before uh, on paper. Um, but it, it kind of, um, it, it's kind of the substance that you can use on any any type of surface. You can use it on wood, metal, glass, whatever you want. And then you can paint and watercolor on it. It's just fascinating. Um, so she had thought I had used ground, this ground stuff to create like a surface to do a watercolor painting on. And um, I had to explain to her, no, it was it was done on watercolor paper, which I then affixed to the bottle. Um, so that was kind of cool. And uh, after I, I was done talking to her, I, I went and looked up uh, watercolor ground. And uh, I think I'm going to buy some of it because it'd be kind of cool to um, to paint and watercolor on like wood and um, I don't know, other surfaces like I don't know, probably wood, <laughs> probably do some uh, wood or some sort of paneling or something like that. I think it'd just be kind of cool. So as you can see, I'm starting off uh, this horse with a uh, like a blue. There's not going to be any kind of like black and white going on in this. Uh, I'm, although I do have a black pencil here in case I need it, but um, I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just going to um, sketch this this guy in using blue as the areas that I would normally do like a, um, like a black. So, uh, okay. Larry says, uh, I'm getting a My Little Pony vibe. Nice. Um, I would have to consult with kid. <laughs> so a ground is sort of like a base or a primer. Yes, uh, exactly. Um, uh, yeah, actually that's, um, that's almost exactly it. I, I could just call it a primer. Um, she called it a ground and that's what they officially call it. Um, and I, I haven't played with it yet, so I don't know exactly how it works, but it does give you kind of like this um, this uh, paper texture. And uh, I've, I went and watched some YouTube videos on it because I'm really excited to go off and uh, get some and try it. Um, it. It does create like this kind of paper texture and then it's otherwise the same as watercolor paper, which in hindsight, this is one of the uh, the things that sucks about me being kind of like a new self-taught artist. I, you know, if I had spent any amount of time doing watercolor and stuff, I probably, or like went to school or something for watercolor. I don't know if there is just a school for watercolor, but that'd be kind of cool. Um, I probably would have learned beforehand that this stuff exists and uh, I would have been like, oh, okay, I'm doing a bottle, a glass bottle. I, I better pick up some of this ground. Instead, stupid me, like, well, I'm going to do a watercolor paper and then I'm going to fix the watercolor paper on it, like a uh, label, which is what I did. Um, and it worked, you know, like I'm not, I'm not saying that what I did um, didn't work because it did. It totally did. I rocked it. Uh, but you know, like getting the rest of the bottle to kind of like work with it, it, it ended up with some texture that it probably didn't need. So anyway, in the future, I'll probably use this ground stuff. I had thought like I was looking at her bottle and I was, I, I just thought it looked cool anyway, just because she's a phenomenal artist. She's a phenomenal, uh, watercolor, uh, artist. And I was admiring her bottle just from like, you know, that standpoint. And uh, I honestly thought she had she had done hers on paper as well and kind of affixed it to the bottle. I had no idea that she used this ground stuff. Um, so, so anyway, I leveled up today, I guess. I, I learned some new stuff. So right now I'm just doing like a preliminary sketch. We're going to get into some more details and stuff like that later. But um, I wanted to uh, just get started with a... Uh, a um, you know, like a simple drawing and stuff that I can work off of here. I hope to get more expressive with it in some areas, uh, just because like, that's kind of the style I like. I like, um, doing something that 
kind of looks expressive, where it's just kind of fun, just making marks all over the place and stuff like that. Kid says, I checked out the bottle. Some are pretty cool, but I'll still bid on Jeremy's. Oh, uh, on the bidding thing. So uh, if some of you guys have um, either sent me money, uh, which is awesome, or you've pledged money um, towards the uh, bidding, I am keeping an eye on it just to see where it goes. And if I do make a bid, it will be on Saturday. If I don't make a bid, um, I'll probably just give you back your money. Because, <laughs> like... Um, some of these bottles i think are going to go for like like mine hasn't received any bids yet that's why i'm waiting until saturday just to see if it does get any bids um and then like you know if it's within a price range that i think uh like we can do with the amount of money that's either been pledged or collected um then i might bid on it um or then i will just to fulfill the obligation because like you guys wanted this to happen um but if um uh, if I don't like, uh, if it, if it doesn't look like it's going to happen, I'll, I'll just, I'll just refund the, uh, people who did send me money and the people who pledged money just consider it, it, it done. It, it's fine. You know, even if we don't get a bottle, maybe, um, maybe I'll buy a bottle myself from like the liquor store or something like that and do like a, um, a new, uh, painting on it or something. And, uh, I don't know, like maybe do my own little auction for charity or something like that. That would be kind of cool um where one of you guys can receive it and like i'll give the uh i'll give the proceeds to um i don't i don't know we'll pick a charity or something like that but maybe i'll do a poll and you guys can pick the charity but anyway point is um even if even if we don't win a bottle this time um there's going to be future bottles just because i love this process I, I love the idea of painting on bourbon bottles so um even if uh we don't get this one we'll we'll do another one and uh and have our own little auction for charity. That'd be kind of cool. And then maybe you guys can get the bottle yourself. I don't. I don't know how many of you guys are drinkers, but you guys can. You guys can join me in a in a glass. That's what I would actually like to do. So, like, if if we do win this bar, bar, this bottle on Saturday, uh, because I think that's when when it ends. I think it ends on Saturday. I'm going to double check on that, but that's my understanding. That's why I was going to wait until Saturday to bid. Um, if we do win. Um, I would love to invite you guys to come and have a, a glass with me because like it would be kind of sad to win this bottle of bourbon and have to drink it myself. I mean, I, I would have help. I mean, my dad would help me and stuff like that, but it would, yeah, it would be a lot more fun if like we had a party of some sort. And uh, I don't think I can just send you, I, I don't think I can open the bottle, pour it into like little shot glasses and like seal them up and send them to you guys. That would be cool. I think I would break a couple of laws doing that. I honestly don't know what the rules are with that uh, shipping bourbon. I don't think you can without like some sort of special license or something like that. But anyway, so we got a bit of a face going on here. Uh, again, this is all done in blue so far. Um, I'm going to switch to uh, other colors here in a moment. I just wanted to get the basic shape of this uh, guy going. So, so keeping with the whole um, describing what I'm doing as I'm working. I, uh, I've been practicing a lot about like uh, not getting distracted and actually uh, describing what I'm doing while I'm talking. So I think I'm getting pretty good at that. Oh, these are pastel pencils, by the way. I, I, <laughs> I probably should have mentioned that. I think I put that in the title um, that we're working with pastel today. Uh, these are not colored pencils. These are like a soft pastel, kind of like a chalk, um, and which makes them really good for blending. So. Uh, we've got this going so far, but if I wanted to like blend these out, it is super simple to make them like really, really, really soft and blend it out. Uh, colored pencils, if I wanted to do this, I'd be having to apply an enormous amount of pressure and or using solvent uh, with colored pencil or, or these pastel pencils. It all just blends nice and neat. The drawback is with working with these pastels is it could get messy you know it is like char yeah you know if you're used to using charcoal it's not it's not that big of a deal you probably wouldn't notice any difference but if you're not used to getting your hands dirty you may or may not like the texture of it or the um you know the messiness of it like some people just hate soft pastels just because it's like so much chalk and stuff like that like if you have trouble breathing or something, you might get a little paranoid that you're breathing in like a bunch of chalk or getting black lung from like, you know, 
too much powder in the air or something like that. None of that bothers me. I, I don't mind getting my hands dirty, so I like to use pastels. I like them because they blend really well, and they got they do have this like nice, soft look to them. Anyway, I got a little carried away there. I didn't really want to blend this out yet, uh, but just to uh, as a demonstration, just how easy they are to blend. So that, I think that looks pretty nice. But anyway, um, I did want to get a little bit more darkness in this eye. And for that, I think I'm going to switch to this, this uh, stick one here. What am I missing here? What are you guys talking about? Uh, oh, Nomadic uh, Madman's in here. How's it going? Um, getting started is the most important part. Yep, I agree. Um, there was a suck-up bottle on there titled Sipping Bourbon. My dad, I, he he, uh, he was telling me, like, they asked what the name was, and he's like, I don't know, Sipping Bourbon? <laughs> so you can tell he put a lot of thought into that. All right, that's not as dark as I want, so let me go back to this pencil. Um yeah, he didn't he didn't put a ton of thought into uh his uh the title of his. Um oh I find out I found out what the um the oh creative boardroom's in here as well. Hey, how's it going, creative? Um let's see, I checked out someone's bottle of one. So I got a slap across the face. Nice nomadic. Um yeah, so like um I did find out uh I, I posted a comment on that thread, but I did finally find out what they named my um my owl. And uh, I'm not too impressed, to be honest with you. They, they called it uh, Avian Americano, which is kind of coffee related. So I, uh, they, they did what I asked, but also it doesn't really say coffee so much. It, it's like aviary Americano or something. It just basically means like American bird, which I don't know. I think they could have done better. But anyway, I pawned it off on them, so I can't complain too much. I am going to switch to black just a little bit because I really want this to be a little bit darker. You know, got to get the eyes right. That's my, that's my thing, right, guys? If you get the eyes right, everything else falls into place. Especially when doing human portraits, which I need to, I need to get better at. If you get the eyes right, everything else is better. All right, so that's a good start, I think. Get some darkness up in here, because this is the year, by the way. I don't know if that's obvious, but. So we are using that brown paper, that uh, that brown craft paper that I've used before. And uh, I mentioned this before, but I, I'm just gonna throw it out there. This is a great paper for just like, anytime you're just doing a throw off like drawing, which, you know, like I'm not planning on keeping this, I could, I, I could frame this and keep it and, and all that stuff, but I wasn't really planning to. I wasn't, I'm not doing this to sell or anything like that. It's just for fun. Um, it's great paper for that. Um, the only thing I wanted to add is make sure you get the acid free paper, um, which is not easy to come by. You have to like, you know, spend a little time looking for some, um, just so that it's not going to like, it is, it's going to age well, essentially. Hey, haters in the house. How's it going, man? Just sipping bourbon, drawing horses. Talking about that, um, the, um, the bourbon bottle auction, which I linked to on the community tab. Um, and I'm going to post a video about tomorrow. Um, if any of you guys are from out of town and you do want to, um, uh, like actually buy and like bid and buy one of these bottles, not even mine, uh, I think you're, you're able to, but you'd have to work out like, shipping with them or something like that uh the price doesn't include shipping um and the price is pretty high already so like you, you'd have to really really want a decorated bottle of bourbon um spoiler alert you can buy the bourbon cheaper i'm sure i think you can get the uh i think for that it, it, it's, well, it's got to be under 100 bucks for a bottle of uh private select uh, maker's mark bourbon i don't really know i should probably look into that all right, so we got got half a face going here. Uh, that eye is way more highlighted than I want it to be. It looks like it's almost glowing. So let me kind of fix that real quick. There you go. I wanted kind of a black eye. Anyhow, I feel like I've drank a lot of coffee today and I'm like super chatty today. I 
think he's waiting for an easel, mama. Uh, oh, hello. When is uh, Geppetto going to paint? Oh, he has an easel. Aha. So, Mama Q sent me something, uh, a care package the other day. Let me get this set up. Uh, I got to take the label off of it. But he does have an easel. Okay. And she also sent me some cool canvases for him to paint on. Now, uh, that's a great question. So when's he going to start painting? He is going to start painting soon, and I already haven't figured out what he's going to paint. Geppetto is going to paint a self-portrait. It is going to look great. Peter says, uh, all good, Jeremy. Just got home. Uh, I was at mom's place for a dinner. Nice. Um, so he's going to be painting his own self-portrait soon uh, because, you know, for a puppet, he's a bit of a narcissist. He doesn't really care about me so much. He just hangs out and watches me and judges me all the time while I draw. Like, he's my worst critic. He is constantly looking at me as if I'm the worst uh, drawer, artist <laughs> in the world. So he wants to show me up. That's what it is. And um, the way he's going to do that is he's going to, uh, he's going to paint his own self-portrait. So we'll see when that happens. Uh, but that's coming up soon. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Um, I don't know when that's going to be. Probably next week. I, I haven't I haven't wrapped my head around it yet. All right, so I'm going to switch colors here because I promised you guys a colorful picture, and this is still looking very monochromatic. And again, if you look at the pictures behind me, all I do is monochromatic pictures. I don't do enough. Uh, there you go, Kevin, $70 at, at uh, Liquor Barn. Yeah, so like, if you guys wanted Private Select, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If we bid on this bottle and we get it and stuff, that's great. But if we don't get it, it's all good because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off and buy um, our own $70 bottle and I'm going to paint a new picture on it and we're going to we're going to do something with that. It's going to be great. So anyway, I don't want to do like a monochromatic picture, so I'm going to switch to this uh, this green that you can barely see here. But hopefully if I put enough of it down, you'll uh, you'll end up being able to see it. So I want kind of like this side to be kind of like hues of blue and this side over here to be kind of like. Um, maybe Hughes isn't the right word. I need to start uh, looking up these words to make sure I use them right. Uh, variations of blue over here and variations of green on this side. So just kind of mapping out where the edge of this horse will be. Um, I had a darker green here. Where did I put that? There you go. I think that's this one. Get this darker green going here. So I can get the edge here. Um, but yeah, so like we'll um we'll 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 end up decorating another bottle at some point. Just because it's such a cool process. And I do really want to try that um uh, that water color ground. Um and uh, see how that goes. Because painting on glass just sounds like fun. Uh I was thinking like I don't know, I was eh. I was just thinking of all the cool different kinds of art. That lady, just she's just super cool. She was, she's just a good watercolor artist. And, it, you know, to me, it was um, it, it was like um, it was it was fun talking to her because she treated me like a peer instead of like a student. Like, even though she gave me a tip that I think is awesome and is going to level me up as a as an artist and, um, you know, allow me to create really cool things. Um, she didn't say it in a condescending way, like, oh, you didn't use ground, you used paper. She didn't, she didn't do any of that. Like, um, you know, she, she talked to me as an equal, which I thought was cool because I don't feel like an equal around these people. Like those guys are the true artists. Um, but yeah. So, uh, anyway, um, I've got all these ideas about watercolor, uh, paintings I can put on different objects. Like I was thinking like, I was thinking like an actual coffee cup with a coffee uh, painting on it. I think that would be kind of cool. Hey, bear, go lay down. Come on. Bedtime. Go sleep. Sorry about that. Um, I was I was thinking that'd be kind of cool to like do a do like an actual coffee cup like my deer um, that I did looks really cool on a bottle. Um, oh, they chose my uh, owl for the uh, the golden ticket uh event um the golden ticket thing is where somebody pays 300 bucks and they go there and then in fact that's actually going on right now like that is tonight um the golden ticket event i could have got got to go for like 75 bucks but i was like eh, i don't know it's like 
what am I going to do there except just drink bourbon and stuff? I can do that here on this live stream. Um, but yeah, so that's going on tonight. And um, the way it works is yeah, you pay 300 bucks and you're guaranteed a bottle. Uh, and I think, I don't know how they dish out the bottles. I don't know if it's like first come first serve or it's random or, or what, how that works, but that's how, uh, that's how that deal works. There you go. I think I need to use both these colors because on this brown paper, this light one's not showing up as light as I wanted it to, at least in this lighting. Uh, so I need to use like both of these, I think. Anywho. Uh, Hater says, um, EID, a celebration, e Eid, a celebration that follows the 30 days of fasting during Ramadan, lasts for three days. Uh, I had the pleasure of being invited to my parents for a dinner where my mother lovingly hand fed me. Nice. That is cool. <laughs> Mama Q says, I knew you would get the golden ticket. Owl was my favorite. <laughs> like, well, every, so the way it works is every artist did two bottles and, uh, of them, uh, one of them went to the, uh, golden ticket event and then one of them went to like regular online public auction. So, uh, I, I think everybody who participated technically got in, into the, uh, the golden ticket thing. I'm not special in that regard. Although there is, um, there is one more thing that might, um, happen. I don't know how that's going to happen, but the makers mark themselves are supposed to pick 10 bottles or at least 10 bottles for their own private collection that goes at their museum. So I'd love to be part of that. I don't know how that works. I think they just randomly pick it. Um, I did take my bottle and kind of move it so that, so like my bottle was on the bottom shelf. I kind of moved it up so that it would be more uh, like obvious to people and stuff like that. So I did kind of cheat a little, um, you know, product placement, that, that kind of stuff matters, you know? Um, Hater says, uh, the food was absolutely delicious and the affectionate kiss uh, on the forehead and a warm hug from my mother made me uh, momentarily forget about all the work-related challenges I am currently facing. That is cool. Congratulations. Yeah, um, the, uh, the whole fasting during Ramadan stuff, that, that fascinates me. It really does. Uh, I, uh, I often think about, you know, the benefits of fasting and stuff just from like a health related standpoint. So I'm just gonna, let me get like a really light green going here. I know you can't really see that, but get kind of a green tint here. And then I think I'm going to have to uh, work almost completely with this um, other green pencil. But uh, yeah, like um, the whole fasting during Ramadan uh, thing, uh, I've had I've had some um, some Muslim friends over the years, and um, you know they they uh, I don't know how devout they were, but they they always practiced that, and it, it was always um, fascinating to me whenever they they uh, they did do that kind of stuff. Because I always, like, even if it's not my culture, I look to other cultures to see if there's, like, anything that I want to kind of appropriate. Like, I don't I don't think that that's bad. Like, if you see something in a different culture that actually works, and um, you're like, well, that sounds pretty cool. I don't think, so their cultural appropriation, I, I feel like, could be bad. But if you're just picking benefits and stuff from things, and you're like, hey, that looks cool. I'm going to try that. I don't think that's bad. I don't know. Maybe maybe different people might have different opinions on that. But you know, like if I look, um, if I look at like um, like Buddhist meditation, for example, I'm not a Buddhist, but I, I do like the idea of like you know quieting your mind, being at peace, um, trying to like you know center yourself and um, and things like that. So like that does all sound like good things. So I don't feel like I have to be a Buddhist to be to borrow those traits, you know. Uh, there is a, uh, there's a thing in, uh, Buddhism, um, I think it's related to like Zen, uh, meditation where you're, um, you're practicing the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again, just to kind of like, you know, focus intently, uh, mindlessly. Um, those all sound like good things. Uh, I will, I will borrow those, uh, type of 
things and apply them to my own, uh, you know, ways of improving myself, I guess. There you go. I'm not speaking very eloquently on this subject, but I, I feel like the sentiment is there. <laughs> Mother's love is the purest. Mother's Day is coming up, isn't it? Is that coming up soon? I feel like it is. I, maybe in May? All right, so we got some green going over here. Uh, I want to figure out where the ear is on this side so I don't lose it, I think. I think it's just going to be a... Yeah, I think it's just going to be a simple triangle kind of sticking out over here on this side. Yeah, I think that's cool. And then get some. So I think I can use some of this green. Yeah, I think that'll work. So I'll probably use more of the stick stuff here as I kind of figure out where everything is. I'm still I'm still in the process of trying to figure out where this horse's face is compared to other features. It does have kind of like a My Little Pony. Um, if, it, if it didn't mess up the color scheme, I would introduce some pink here. I think that would be kind of cool. But I think it would mess up the yeah, color scheme. It does kind of have a My Little Pony feel to it. All right, so up here, got the main... You want I think the ear would start up here. You guys hear my dog over there whining? She's just like rrr, rrr, like I took her favorite toy away or something. I think the problem with the uh the dog is that um people were eating in the house before I uh started doing this and I'm like, We gotta do this live stream, you guys gotta come in here or else you're gonna have to stay out there. And um, I think they want other people's food. My dog is definitely a trash panda. There. Um, I still feel like I should rename her to uh, Bandit because, like, she's got those facial markings on her face, and she acts like she's always stealing people's food and just generally acting like a uh, a nuisance. That looks pretty cool. Again, still trying to figure out where everything is. Hey, Lorraine's in the house. Cool. Welcome aboard. We're just, uh, we're trying to draw a horse in, um, using, you know, using color. So that's not all like monochromatic like they usually do. Um, I have done some pictures of horses like in realistic colors, like, uh, browns and, and so on. Um, you know, sometimes a white horse and so on, but, uh, for this one, I wanted to kind of like get some, get some different colors going. So we're doing a blue green horse today. Get this mane going. I think, I think I want the mane to go all the way up here and then i start switching back to the blue here. But I think the neck kind of comes it comes across like that and then kind of kind of just dips down a little bit and then up here i've been very lucky to travel uh a couple of predominantly muslim countries um the amount of hospitality i experienced was off the charts i can't remember ever being treated better as a traveler well said well you know what i like um in I, this is just my understanding. I may not, like, if I if I ever get something wrong, just feel free to correct me. I am not going to be offended uh, because I really don't know. But my understanding is um, one of the cool things about, like, Muslim uh, communities is that they're very communal, right? So, like, they eat together. Um, they, uh, they just basically do everything together. Like, uh, I'm thinking of the big... Um, the big feasts where they're all sitting around and uh, they're sharing from like plates. I, I think that's the, uh, I think I've gotten that right. Um, that to me is kind of cool where the, um, the entire meal is like a shared, almost like buffet at the table 
kind of deal. That's kind of cool. I would like to do that more with my friends, <laughs> but you know, you know, I don't know. Uh, yeah, there's probably some places around where we can do that. I, I'm pretty sure there there are some um, some uh, largely uh, Islamic um, uh, like restaurants around here. I'm not really sure. I'd have to look into that. Others are an invaluable asset in our lives. Uh, their contributions cannot be adequately expressed. We owe them immense gratitude for caring us for nine months and shaping us into the individuals uh, we have become today. Oh. I agree. Dog, quit whining. So I want, I really want like this hair over here to be kind of curly. So I'm going to come back to that. I want to uh, move back over to this side um, so that I can get some more of these uh, facial features in. And I might have to look for some other greens and stuff like that. This, these greens here aren't as dark as I wanted them to be. So I may have to adjust those. Dogs would do that um, with you, Jeremy. Yeah, my dogs do do that. Like, I, I know I'm not supposed to. Like, there's, I get, whenever I tell people I do this, and hopefully you guys won't do this as well, uh, people, like, judge me for how how human I treat my dogs. Like, like I give them human food sometimes. Not, not the bad stuff, but stuff that, you know, like, I don't know. Like if I'm eating a hot dog or something, I'll give them a bite of the hot dog. Uh, if I'm, so my problem is this is this is actually my my legit problem is um, I'm so used to giving them the last bite of my food that whenever I'm out and I'm like, I don't know, I'd like McDonald's or something. I I don't know where. Um, and I I'm eating that burger and I'm I'm down to the last bite. I give the last bite to my dog so often, and you can tell they're spoiled from it. Um. I give them that last bite so often that when I'm, they're not around, I feel weird. I feel like, what am I supposed to do with this last bite of food? Uh, so yeah, I do share with my dogs. I know I'm not supposed to. I know that all the experts and stuff, they say, ah, you shouldn't be fe feeding your dog human food. I guess my dog's a little bit overweight. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, wow. She was offended by that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, well, you are a little overweight. You need to exercise more. Don't don't err me. You know it's true. I ask you if you want to go for walks and stuff. You're like, I'm watching TV. <laughs> Anywho, um, yeah, I know you're not really supposed to uh, feed them human food, but sometimes I do. I'm not. I'm not the best uh, caretaker of the pets. But what I make, what I, what I don't provide in terms of like responsible parenthood, um, I make up for in love. I love my pets. They're, they're so great. No, don't groan. Come on. That's a good thing. So this is muscle that kind of comes back here. And, uh, let me pet the dog while I'm doing this. There's this muscle that kind of comes back here through the neck. And it kind of wraps around here. This is what I kind of like about doing horses. Um, I don't do a lot of uh, human figure like work. Uh, I thought about doing that. So like, I want to keep it like PG on, or like at least PG 13 on this channel. So I don't, I don't want to do like a bunch of um, human, um, you know, like muscle bound dudes or like, you know, naked chicks or anything like that. I want to keep it kind of, um, Kid friendly on this show, so uh, unfortunately I don't get it to do a lot of uh, figure art. I guess I could do like dancers or something like that, um, which I may do. I you know I have been trying to think of different ways that I can do the human form in a tasteful way that's not going to like you know break the spirit of what I'm going for on this channel. Um, but anyway, my my point is. Um, that's one of the things I like about horses. Uh, they are these very muscular creatures, and I love doing the tonal value. This is what I would do with humans if I was uh, doing figure art. 
but I love doing the shadows and uh, highlights of the muscles in the neck and and the you know like the veins in the face and stuff like that that's the kind of stuff i love about horses that's why i keep coming back to horses is well like i said also where i live you have to be able to draw horses but beyond that i love the form of horses i love the musculature i love the um uh, i love all that anatomy that goes into like a horse's neck and um you know like i don't know they're just the horse's body is just awesome Muslims have a traditional communal dining, yes, which I think is awesome, uh, where they gather around a large uh, tray or plate to share their meals. Um, this uh, practice t typically involves a minimum of five people eating together. That's cool. Additionally, it's customary for Muslims to sit uh, on the floor rather than using tables and chairs. That was my impression, but I wasn't sure if that was just the movies that told me that or if that was the true thing. Uh, Jeremy, do you ever draw snakes? maybe i have i don't know if i ever did i probably turned it into a dragon just because like um i don't know like i've drawn snake features wait i did draw snakes back when i was younger um because i was into like gi joe's and cobra so i i drew snakes um you know from that aspect but as far as like um drawing snakes anytime recently no i don't think i have that'd be fun like if you want me to draw a snake i'll draw a snake i was thinking about doing some reptiles for um in my uh coffee painting so like um uh snakes turtles lizards all of those things would be cool uh hater says for my father uh, for instance my father has been in the uk since the 1960s still maintains this tradition by eating while sitting on the floor i think that's cool I, I I think that's cool, and I think the type of food that is uh, traditional for you guys is, is also really cool. I love that kind of food myself. Like, um, unless I'm mistaken, a lot of it's almost like European, uh, not European, uh, Mediterranean, um, like kebabs, um, things like that. Um, I love that food. But again, I don't know enough about it. <laughs> about the culture to uh, be able to speak with any kind of confidence on this stuff, but that's my understanding at least. I, I don't want to get things wrong. Lorraine says, uh, just put in, uh, just put warning in the description so that people are prepared. Yeah, okay, so like on the, um, yeah, on the, um, on the figure art, yeah, I could probably do that. But also, you know, like, I don't know, I don't really feel a need to. Like, you can draw the human form um, without, you know, nudity like the, the, it's not necessary to to do that and you know even if i if, even if i wanted to draw nudity to um be a better artist or something like that i don't have to stream it on youtube or or make a video um it's not necessary uh plus you know people do interesting things with clothes on <laughs> uh you know people people dance um you know in, in leotards or I, I don't know what people do <laughs> like my uh my impression is that people uh uh do things with clothes on that are just as interesting and you know you can get a lot of the um you can get um a lot of the anatomy of a person uh through their clothing and stuff like that like you, you can see you can see in my arms basically how my arms work even like i i don't have to take my shirt off to see how my arms work um anyway it's just not anything i need to do really uh, at least on, on like YouTube, if I ever, if I ever wanted to practice that kind of art, you know, I, I can do it off, off, uh, offline or whatever. But anyway, um, my, my whole point and all that really was that, uh, when doing horses and, and also some dogs, some dogs have, um, you know, that very lean, um, kind of, uh, well, first off, like short haired dogs, uh, and I'm thinking like groundhog, uh, groundhogs, <laughs> not groundhogs, um, sorry, greyhounds, no, <laughs> I say groundhogs, all right, um, yeah, greyhounds, uh, Doberman pinchers, uh, you know, like the short haired dogs, um, probably some small dogs, chihuahuas, yeah, they have that, um, they have that really uh, thin skin, short haired, um, 
you know, kind of anatomy that shows off their muscles and, and bones and things like that underneath. So that that's really my, my whole point. My whole point is um, it's so much fun to draw these tonal kind of features here is, uh, is what I was trying to get at. Yeah. Because uh, that, that to me is a lot of fun. And um, that is uh, something, you know, that I really enjoy about this particular medium, uh, pastels and also uh, charcoal. Uh, these charcoal and <laughs> pastel are, uh, oh, what I miss? Um, Larry would be happy if you did a pick of a Lady J with a snake. Absolutely. <laughs> um, this kind of medium, um, pastels and uh, uh, charcoal are kind of just made for that, uh, really, seriously, when it comes to um, doing, uh, you know, like tonal values and stuff and muscles and, and, and so on. I'm going to use this really dark blue here and see if I can get... So I know I said I was just going to use these colors here, but I'm using variations of that color. So I don't I don't mind dipping into the uh, the thing over here and pulling out a darker blue. But yeah, but, and when I say figure art, I I don't mean um, I just mean people doing things, right? So like dancing, uh, people walking, people stretching. Um, you know, uh, they they call them gestures. So like just people doing various different gestures and stuff, you know, like you could just be sitting there, like sitting there in a chair or something like that. And this is a gesture, right? So like, how do you capture like my arms just sitting there, like almost defensively, uh, relaxed, but defensive as well. So how do you capture that gesture in, in a drawing? Um, that That's the kind of stuff I'd like to explore. Um, with drawing people. I, I think that would be very cool. Uh, or not, not necessarily cool, but it, it would be fun. It would be nice to explore, I think. And I think there's tasteful ways of doing all of that. Not that there's anything wrong with, um, you know, the other forms of art and stuff. I, it's just not something I need to do. I think this is starting to look like a horse. I like it. How are we doing on time? We're doing great on time. Great. How was your recent camping trip? Um, hope you're great. Oh, wow. Um, uh, I had forgotten that the uh, kid was going on a camping trip and stuff. Haters, uh, haters taking notes on us. I see that. Uh, very nice. Drawing yoga would be neat. That would be neat. Um, have you ever, um, have you ever seen, um, uh, was it, uh, what is it? Goat yoga or something where they do yoga with a goat on their back. That would be neat. <laughs> like <laughs> drawing, drawing somebody doing uh, yoga, um, with a goat, <laughs> because I do like doing wildlife animal uh, like uh, pictures. So why not combine wildlife pictures with, uh, yoga? That would be cool. <laughs> now I'll probably do some, um, some figure, uh, art before too long because i have been thinking about it lately and um it is something that i want to get into um just to kind of like i don't know i, I don't want to always do the same thing because then you can kind of get in a rut and um it's not like i don't enjoy doing what i do it's just i want to i want to progress as an artist as well as like you know get really good at what i do well i want to get I want to get better at what I do well, but also progress uh, as an artist, uh, which sometimes takes, you know, challenging yourself. I mean, I, I really, it, it's easy to just do the same things over and over again, things that are in your comfort zone. But I really think that you need to like branch out and do things that are outside of your comfort zone. So like, as I, as I mentioned, my, my comfort zone is monochromatic, right? I'm not used to doing, um, you know, bright colors and, and, and so on. Uh, so getting outside my comfort zone, I'm trying to do some uh, color here. See how it goes. And I, I really think that like if you're painting a, or drawing a uh, horse and um, you get all the shadows and everything correct, it really doesn't matter what color you're drawing it in. You can do these greens, you can do the uh, blues, and it all works out. It, it's all good. Let's see. I want this to be dark. 
Do I have a darker than that green? Yes. Try this. Yeah, that's better. I want, a, I want a bit of dark underneath this ear over here. Uh, your niece did, uh, oh, your niece did uh, goat yoga. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it looks, it looks kind of cool, you know, like, um, cause like you see, you see the goat crawling on their backs and stuff like that. And I'm like, you know, that actually, that, that, that seems like that might crack your back and make your back feel better. Cause like, I don't know, sometimes like, um, sometimes I wouldn't mind somebody just walking on my back and stuff, make it feel better. Um. Why not a goat, you know? I think goat yoga is awesome. It just looks like a lot of fun. Um, some of that yoga stuff, I don't understand. Like, I still don't know what hot yoga is. What What is that? Like, I, yoga always seems like one of those things that I, I would love to do because it sounds healthy and it sounds good for you and it, it sounds like it's got all these benefits. And then I'm like, well, yeah, but then I also want to nap. So <laughs> I don't know. And there's a lot of things like that. There's a lot of things that like, um, I like, I like salads and I do eat salads, but then I'm like, you know, I should probably just eat salads all the time. And then I'm like, well, yeah, but then there's bacon, you know, I love bacon or like just being a vegetarian in general. I, I, I love the idea of being a vegetarian. I think it's a great idea. I, I admire the people who do it, but then I'm like, man, that's a lot of work. Um, like, uh, there was a time, um, when, uh, when I was a little bit larger and I was trying uh, different diets and uh, one of the diets I tried was, um, what was it, the Atkins diet or the keto, whatever one that allowed you to eat as much uh, like meat as you want, but no bread or that's probably all of them actually. But anyway, whichever one that is, um, I tried it and it, and it works. You do end up losing weight and everything. But then I started realizing like, you know, I bet you I'm losing weight just because I'm eating less because it's so, so damn hard to be on this diet. Like you, you have to make your own food basically like, you know, if you're eating snacks and stuff like that, you can just go to any old convenience store and just pick up snacks. If you're, if you're eating some of these diets that they have out there, you know, you actively have to basically make your own food. You have to think ahead. You have to prepare. You have to like hunt down the type of food that's on your diet or something like that. And that's work. And I think that's why you end up losing weight. You end up losing weight because it's like so inconvenient to be eating that kind of stuff. Like imagine, imagine if you're on a, like an all sal salad diet, you're going to lose weight just because it is hard to come across a salad, you know, unless you're going to like a salad store or something like that, where are you going to like, you can't just go into like the gas station buy some gas and oh and pick up a nice healthy salad you know it takes work you have to prepare that kind of stuff and you know and i'm not saying that's bad that's actually great that that's how we should be you know like we should be putting that amount of thought into our food which i don't and that that's that's not good um but also it's like i think that's in that that's why you end up losing weight is because it's just so inconvenient that's what i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna um i'm gonna start a new diet craze and I'm going to publish a book on it. And, and the book title is going to be The Inconvenience Diet. Because <laughs> I, do, I do believe that's how it works. It's so inconvenient to be on these diets that you just end up losing weight because you just don't eat as much. It's just too much, it's too much hassle. Like, um, literally the lazy man's way to losing weight. It's like, you're too lazy to eat. I'm only half joking here. I, I actually think that that, does, that, that that is how it works. It, it works because it's like just so inconvenient to be. I, I kind of feel that way with uh, being like, it's not as bad nowadays um, to be like a vegetarian. Uh, my what, my younger brother, he's he's vegetarian. And um, I've been watching him for a couple of years because I don't I don't have a I think it would be hard for me to quit like you know, some meats, like I, I don't know, I get a craving for red meat every now and then and stuff. I just have to have red meat. That's just me. Um, I, I get a craving for like things like bacon. Um, it's, it's just how I live. I, it, it's, it's tough for me to not, um, like I even get cravings for fish sometimes like during Lent or whatever. Uh, so it'd be tough for me to give up like 
meet all together. But I've been watching my brother and how he lives and stuff, and it's not as it's not as tough as I thought it would be. I thought it would be tough to be a vegetarian, but most restaurants they have a vegetarian option. Um, you know, like even even like social things, like you go to a wedding or whatever, there's like a vegan option. Or I I don't know the difference between vegan and vegetarian, so I might be using those incorrectly. Sorry, um, but I don't know. I think. I think I could I could be convinced to be a vegetarian. I, I think I could. I think it'd be tough, and I'd have to work at it. But I think I could be convinced just because I'm I'm such an animal lover, and I I buy the argument that they have about how animals are mistreated in these farms and stuff like that. So I don't think it would be hard to convince me to be a, a vegetarian or whatever the term is. The brevity of life necessitates indulging in a variety of delectable foods, uh, ranging from bacon to venison. Adopting a vegetarian lifestyle is considered unnatural. I believe that. And what are you doing eating bacon? I thought bacon was uh, prohibited. I, I thought you guys weren't allowed to eat bacon. Not that I'm judging. Like, if you want to eat bacon, go for it. Just, that surprises me. My canine teeth require protein. I mean, I do, I do get a craving, literally a craving for uh, red meat sometimes. I, I think it's the iron in it or something like that. Like sometimes, um, like sometimes even like where I'm on a particular diet and I'm watching what I eat and stuff like that, I'll get, I'll get a craving for a steak and yeah, I may not go to like a steakhouse or something like that, but I'm going to the store, I'm buying myself a steak. I'm coming home and I'm grilling it just because I need that, that in my diet. I don't know. But like I said, I don't think it would be hard to convince me to uh, to be a vegetarian. I just, I'm just not. <laughs> and I definitely, would, if I ever did become one, I wouldn't be one of those that go around um, giving meat eaters a grief over it and stuff like that. Because I I, I know how it is. I, I I I love bacon. I really I I love bacon. I can't eat as much bacon as I used to when I was younger. I I can't do grease anymore. Um, it's just not it's something that sits well in my stomach. I don't, I, I don't know what deficiency I've got, but, um, like greasy foods. I used to love fried chicken. I can't eat that so much anymore. I mean, I can eat it, but I'll suffer for it later. And sometimes it's worth the suffering, but it's still suffering. Um, that's how I feel like with bacon. It's also that like when I eat bacon, I eat like all the bacon, like I'll, uh, whatever, however many pounds or whatever comes in one of those, uh, uh, packages of bacon i'll fry them all up and i'll eat all of it all at once how about the inflation diet diet meat is too expensive now there you go the inflation diet along with so the lazy the um inconvenience diet and the inflation diet go hand in hand it, it just becomes too inconvenient to eat it's too expensive too uh uh too much work kid says i could not be convinced to be a vegetarian i could not be convinced to give up chocolate yeah Chocolate, is that is that like you can be a you can be a vegetarian and eat chocolate? I think that's like that's from a plant, right? Like a cocoa plant or I don't know, oompa loompa plant. I don't know where chocolate comes from, but oh, chocolate covered bacon. Oh man, chocolate covered bacon. Um, there's a there's a restaurant in town that does candied bacon, and uh, it's so good. It's um. It's kind of like, I guess it's kind of like a syrup or something like that, like a crusty syrup. And then it's got, um, it's just got that saltiness to it and also the sweetness of, uh, of the whatever candied stuff they put on it. It's so good. Candied bacon um, served with a, uh, like a peanut butter sauce. Oh, that's the shit. So good. It never, it never fails. We always end up talking about food on this channel. You guys make me so hungry. I think you guys do this on purpose. Or maybe I do it and I just don't realize it. How are we doing on time? We're doing good on time. We got, we got a bit of a horse going here. Yeah, so far this uh, horse is just a sketch, but um, I like it. All right, let me see if I can introduce some more colors in here because I did want a variety of colors. So I wanted this light blue. 
I should have used the white paper. I don't know how well some of this stuff uh, like shows up. But I wanted this light blue in here in some areas. And again, on um, on brown paper, tone paper of any type, um, the paper itself is your mid-tone, right? So like you're you're really just adding the shadows in these colors that we chose. And then in this case, it really doesn't matter what colors you, you choose. Um, as long as you get kind of the value of those colors, right? Um, and then, you know, like these brighter colors, like in this case, it's really light blue becomes your highlights and stuff over the midtones. So you still keep your midtones in here. Like you don't want to cover up all the brown, but you light up like the ridge and stuff like that. And I might add some white to it as well to introduce a, another color, but and then you can kind of blend this stuff out. Um, let me get a clean, clean smudge brush. And you can use all kinds of different things. I usually use these smudge brushes or or just use my uh, my hand or, or something like that. My issue is that I like just about everything. That is the truth. That That is the problem. All things in moderation, though. I, I, I actually do believe that. Like... You can eat whatever you want, as long as you don't go crazy with it. Like self-discipline and stuff, which is tough, you know. Um, I find that lately I've been uh, I've been kind of having a little bit of trouble with self-discipline. I just I just want things, you know. Like I ate a I ate a pizza today, and um, I'm not sure I should have ate that pizza, but I. I enjoyed it. It was good. I might eat another pizza after this. I don't know. They're like the little small pizzas. Yeah, so get a little bit of I'll also help get this ear. Okay, get this working right. Sorry, got distracted by this ear up here that I didn't finish. Can cat food is expensive. Where's Rome Dog at? Yeah, I was gonna say, don't be talking about canned cat food around Rome Dog. He's gonna end up making wine out of it. <laughs> See, <laughs> that's funny. I'm so poor. I live off of canned food. Unbelievable how great it tastes. Hey, you know, like, if that's your thing, go for it. Uh, again, um, Rome Dog was in here talking about how you can make wine out of uh, cat food one time. Send me a recipe. I, I haven't gotten to it, but send me a recipe and everything. So, if that's your thing, you won't catch me... Uh, giving you grief over it. Yeah, that looks cool. So it's almost like this horse is in kind of like, um, kind of odd, but it's almost like he's in like some neon lights. He's at a farm or something that has neon lights. That's what's going on. Nice chicken salad yesterday. Um, I had one of the best chicken salads the other day. I'm curious how you make yours. Um, the one I had was like a traditional Waldorf style or whatever, but it had the um, had the uh, the grapes in it and the walnuts and the bits of celery and and so on. I love that kind of a chicken salad. It's so good. But I'm kind of curious how you make your um, your chicken salad. 
We should swap recipes on here. I feel like there's such a variety of people in here. There's probably some really good recipes for like, I don't know, like Hater with his uh, his his ethnic food, and then you know, Husker with her cat food or something like that. And uh, we probably have like a wide variety of different um, meals we can get out of this uh, this community here. Me, I am. Uh, like I said, I don't eat as much pizza as I used to, but I have the perfect pizza sauce recipe. Like, if you think my art is good, which, you know, it's debatable, but if you think my art is good, you should try my pizza sauce. It is so good. It's really, really good. It is, um, it's got kind of a sweetness to it. Um, and then like a little bit of a kick to it. It, um, it has like basically every spice that you can ever think of in it. I'm gonna have to post my uh, my pizza and sauce recipe. But I used to do that. My my parents had a like a little small um, coffee shop slash cafe for a couple of years, and um, they used to help out there and make uh, pizza every now and then. And uh, people would actually travel to come and eat my pizza. That's how good it was. Uh, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm overstating this either. I feel like it was really good pizza. Like, like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty humble guy, but when it comes to that pizza, then I, I think that's subjectively good pizza. Like, you can have whatever toppings you want to it and stuff, but that sauce, that sauce was good. That was a winner. I should have bottled that up or something. I don't know how that works, but that, that's what I should have done. Not that fancy, Jeremy. Oh, the Waldorf? Yeah, that, that stuff's good, though. Um, yeah, give it a try sometime. Uh, Nomadic Madman says, you're going to be famous. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. I don't think I'm going to be famous. I think I'm going to... Uh, I think I'm going to continue drawing pictures because it's fun and hanging out with you guys because that's fun. Um, I don't... I don't think... I don't think fame's in the cards. But that's okay because, like, I, I rather... I'd rather hang out with a couple of solid people like yourselves than hang out with a bunch of uh, people that are complete strangers, you know? Like, uh, I'd rather hang out with, uh, let's see, it says, I think, 14 concurrent viewers in here. I'd rather hang out with 14 people who are awesome, like you guys are, than hang out with 14,000 people who I have no idea who they are or, you know, can't possibly get to know them or anything like that. I mean, I can't talk about recipes with 14,000 people. I don't know how that works. So I, I appreciate this small community we've got. I think it's a lot of fun. You know, you guys are cool. We have a lot of fun in here. I appreciate it. That's better than being famous. I don't want to be famous in anything. I just want to draw pictures. What I would like... It would be nice if this YouTube would accept me into their partner program and start sending me money for the ads. That way I can do people's pet portraits for free. That's what's, that'd be nice. That is in the cards, I think. Someday that will happen. Um, and by free, I mean like, you know, don't have to worry about the postage because YouTube's paying for it. Don't have to worry about the art supplies because YouTube's paying for it. <clears throat> that is something I think we can we can work out and then you know then we're having fun with the purpose i think like there's some guys who do that um there is um at least on tiktok i don't i don't know if it's on youtube but there's some guys who go around and um they pick like a maybe you guys have seen these guys i forget their name but they they go around and they pick a uh, a yard it just looks way overgrown and needs some care and stuff like that. And um, they'll go in and, and like weed eat it and lawnmower it and all that stuff. And it's, it's really satisfying to watch uh, just them clean up this yard and they just do it for free. And uh, the reason why is because like people tune in to watch it, you know, and, um, and I guess TikTok gives them money to do that or something. I, I think that would be kind of cool, you know, like if uh enough people were watching that I could do that. That would be awesome. Draw people's pets for free. What? Oh, go lay down. Nobody's drawing you right now. <laughs> You're such a drama queen. 
Go lay down. Bear's gonna be famous. She gonna be in, she gonna be in a Hollywood movie or something like that about I don't know about cats. She's gonna be in a movie about cats. That's gonna be cool. Ah, oh, that's exactly how you do it, kid. That's how um, uh, we had it the other day. Just use the rotisserie stuff, like from Walmart. Um, the rotisserie chicken they always have up front. That's such a good value. Just pick up that rotisserie chicken. Um, add, the, uh, add the nuts, add the, uh, the uh, grapes. So good. And I think it's uh, the mayonnaise and I think a little bit of sour cream. I don't remember. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of sour cream or some sort of, some sort of cream in it. Uh, it's not just mayonnaise. You know what else is getting? Not everybody's into this, but deviled eggs. You guys ever have deviled eggs? I love deviled eggs. Whenever there's like a potluck or something, I'm eating up all the deviled eggs. That's like the perfect Easter um, uh, food. We're doing on time. We're doing okay. Just want to. I want to get this main in here. You know, I feel like I'm getting pretty close to it. I could probably use a stick. I don't know why I'm like stressing. Yeah. There we go. You see that? Like this is a lot brighter. And then some of the stuff I'm not going to blend, so like it's hard to it's hard to see on this camera. But if I leave some of this rough, it just has this cool little um, texture that is really good for uh, pastel. So I'm just going to leave that there. Yeah, so that's cool. This side of the uh, the horse, I want to kind of look like the Hulk. You know, I want it to look like. Hork, uh, Hulk horse, Hulk horse, Hulk, Hork. I can't even say that word. I don't think it is a word, real word. That's the problem. Little curls in there. I think that looks cool. What do you guys think? A little bit of a. I'll come back up here and do some more later. But I want to make some progress on the the blue side of the horse. Relax on. I think I can get some gray down here. And it's coming off as white, but I don't know. There you go. All right, so I think I will blend some of that out, but not too much, just kind of as it gets closer to the face. And then All right, so that's probably okay. Um, my salad consists of grilled chicken and Dijon mustard along with watercress, celery, iceberg. Oh man, that sounds awesome. Granny Smith apples. Oh, there, yeah, there's apples in that stuff. Oh, feta cheese. Oh, that sounds great. Rotisserie chicken and rice kept me fed, uh, on $7 a week for several months when I lived in Hawaii. I'm telling you, you go into Walmart, I know this isn't everywhere, but you go into Walmart, pick up one of those rotisserie chickens they always have prepared for you. Like, that stuff, I don't know when they started doing that. I feel like they only started doing that maybe in the last 20 years or whatever, but that was brilliant for them to start up that thing. 
that's what you need. Just go into Walmart, pick up one of those rotisserie chickens, and you're done for dinner. Like, you can do all kinds of things with that. You can make chicken sandwiches out of it. You can eat the chicken by itself. And it's so good, too. Like, um, I, I think they have different kinds, but the lemon pepper, ah, oh, so good. Lemon pepper is the shit. The bomb. What do they call it? Dope. It's so good. Oh, that looks good. Oh, you're going to have to chill out, man. We're not even close to being done. I still got I still to do the whole blue side of this face. Yeah, go lay down. Cool. Jump it. Jump it. It's almost like that dog doesn't speak English. I just love the sound. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I love the sound of this stuff scraping across the paper. I know that's not for everybody, but I love it. Let's see, I think this one was darker. Let's see. Mm, that's still too bright. I can't use that. Let me use this. I wasn't really going to use the black, but I think um, if, as long as I blend it in, it becomes like kind of like a dark green. So I think it's fine. Just got to, I, I wanted to create that like value separation between these things. Like make sure that gets in there. Kevin says rotisserie makes a, uh, oh, let me make it. Oh, yogurt in uh, mom's one. Yeah, so yogurt or sour cream. Yeah, yogurt would probably work well, really well. Um, let's see what else. Trusted Living says, uh, it looks cool, but is it the uh, green and blue base colors? Um, I think these colors work really well together, uh, like the blues and the greens and stuff like that. And I think, I think it's visually interesting. I just wanted to, like, go some colors on this and stuff like that. So don't beat me up too bad. I'm still learning colors, but I think these colors work really well together. Um, okay, Larry says, Nomad, I was driving down the road the other day and I noticed a chicken keeping up with my truck alongside the road. So I sped up and the bird kept right up with me. So I floored the pedal and the chicken sped up as well and then shot across the road in front of me. I slammed on the brakes, backed up and followed the bird down the driveway. He shot, he shot down. I was met by a farmer. I asked him if I don't know where this story is going, but I feel like that's that bird, that chicken's going to end up as a rotisserie chicken <laughs> before this story's done. Oh, Stephen Klein's in the room. Hey, how's it going, Stephen? Yeah, Relentless Mind Works. Uh, I think yogurt is probably the right way to go when it comes to uh, the War Waldorf. I don't know how that's pronounced. Waldorf um, chicken salad. Barry, you're gonna have to lay down, okay? We're not we're not done. I'm trying to draw a pretty horse here. Yes, yeah, so you can come up here and say hi if you want, but that's it. Alright, so I want to get a little bit of a white in here. The highlight. Okay, you wanna come up here and draw? You can come up here and draw pictures? Hmm? Get a ball in my face? Say hi to people. You know, it's easier to draw when I have two hands. This is tough. Let's see, I think I had a white somewhere. It's tough to draw when I only have like one hand, buddy. Plus, you're getting fur everywhere. Get 
that's what I like over here. I'm going to end up putting you out, and then you're going to be stuck out there, and you're not going to be happy with that. Anyway, she's acting up because usually uh, if she's acting bad, I yell at her and I'm not yelling at her because I'm trying to be nice to her. And uh, she's getting confused because she doesn't know that she's supposed to be laying down. Here, go lay down. Go on. Go on. These dogs do not listen to me. They, they basically run the house. Some definition going on that ear. I like this horse. I think this horse is coming along pretty good. What do you guys think? Thumbs up on the horse here. Uh, you're encouraging her kid by calling her sweet bear. She knows she knows she's adorable and that she can get like get away with so much stuff. I I let my dogs just basically get away with anything. I'm not much of a disciplinarian. I like this pencil. It looks kind of black, but it's actually blue. Like a real dark blue. He saw that chicken come out to find out he was a retired genetic geneticist who created his own chicken hybrid what the heck <laughs> because his family likes dark meat he created a chicken with three legs what are you talking about larry what is this crazy story you're telling because his family likes dark meat he created a chicken with three legs i asked how does it taste the farmer replied don't know never caught one yet okay enough larry jokes <laughs> My guess is it tastes like chicken because everything tastes like chicken. That's hilarious. That's great. That's a great story. We have some of the best stories on this channel. That's really good chicken. I feel like I should name, I should come up with better names for my, um, for my drawings. I like to name the animal, but I, I don't know what the title of these artworks. Like, I wonder if there's like some tutorial or class on how to name your, your art. Um, I had a white pencil here. I think, yeah, get this little light ridge going here. I like that. It's a very soft horse, I think. I like this guy. Trusted living says I don't have thumbs. I'm sorry to hear that, Trusted. I am all thumbs. <laughs> Get it? Oh, eh. It's kind of a funny joke if you think about it. All thumbs. I 
So I, I like highlighting these ridges and stuff. And going back to that anatomy discussion that we were talking about earlier, um, where you're highlighting and casting into shadow different pieces of the animal and the bone structure and the underlying muscles and, and so on. Again, when drawing human beings, it, it's it's a it's basically the same thing. Um, and that's why these uh this particular medium is so good for drawing um sessions. This and along with charcoal. So I don't want it to be all white though. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some blue up in here. I do feel like I could introduce some pink in this and it would still work. I think pink and green and all of that will probably work well together. There's like some weird transition point where it goes from blue into the like the green and stuff. I'm not really sure how I'm deciding that, but I'm recognizing that it's in here somewhere. Hork is a good name. I feel like Hork is a good name for this horse. It's like half horse, half like Hulk. <laughs> Here I am. I call that horse wispy. I like it. Ask Papa Parnell to name the art. Uh, he'll, he'll be like sipping horses or something. <laughs> like, I guarantee he put no thought into naming that bottle of it. Sipping, sipping uh, whiskey. All right. Did he call it sipping bourbon or sip, sipping whiskey? I don't I don't remember. But that's hilarious. And then his other one, the one that they accepted for the uh, golden ticket um, uh, party thing, uh, that was like inspired by the distillery itself. So he called it touring the distillery. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, he tries. Like, his actual bottles turned out really cool. I like the sculpture on it. Um, there was another bottle kind of done in his style, which I thought was kind of neat, uh, called ne Necronomicon. And, um, it looks, it looks like it's straight out of like, uh, Evil Dead. If you guys are familiar with that movie, uh, Bruce Campbell, um, they had a, uh, Book of the Dead or something like that. I don't know, like an evil book or whatever. They had like the scary face on it. And, uh, one of those bottles of bourbon, I don't know who designed it. And what's weird about it is like, there's only one like it. Like, I don't know, like, what they did as their second bottle. I'm going to have to look that up. But anyway, um, they, uh, it looks straight like it's out of a uh, Evil Dead movie or something, which I think is cool. I think it's really interesting, those bottles, uh, how, how much variety there is. Like, there are some people who did straight up paintings, right? Um, like textbook paintings like stuff you would see at some art show or something like that um there's some people who did murals on there some people who did landscapes on there some people who did sculptures somebody encased one of the um the bottles in a uh, in another container like a re made out of resin it looked like a space capsule or or like a baby bottle top or something i don't know um it's very strange uh but it's just so weird, the creativity that people put into these things. I love that kind of stuff. When you get a, a group of artists together and you ask them to do the same task, like basically everybody does the same task, um, the wide variety of results you get, it's just it's just fascinating to me. Like even in my own household, like uh, between me and my dad, just the difference, you know. Because my, my dad draws a little bit as well, you know. Like he could have drawn a picture. He decided to go the sculpture route. I could have done the sculpture route, but I decided to draw a, or paint a picture. I could have drawn a picture. There's a, there were some bottles in there where people had drawn very, very technically uh, well done drawings 
there was a lot of horses. It was a, it was a horse. Um, but, uh, you know, these very technical drawings and stuff like that, I could have done that and everything. It's just so fascinating to me, the different direction that people go when left to their own creativity. I should have paid that 75 bucks and gone, um, to the, uh, to their thing just to be a fly on the wall, listening to people talk about the, uh, the art. I should have went just to, uh, kind of push my art on the, uh, the maker's mark people, because that's the next, that's the next like little kudos, you know, if, if, um, if it was accepted into the maker's mark, um, museum, that would be kind of cool. I like this. This is very, very nice looking. Sorry. Just took my own horn here. I like the combination of colors. It is almost like there's like a green light somewhere shining on. Oh, don't don't let me forget before we're done. I need to use this accent color somehow somewhere in here. That's the challenge. Got to make sure that that makes it in here. I like to give myself challenges, you know. I like a limited palette with an accent color like this. I, I think that's kind of cool. Yeah. Not time for you, buddy. I think the dog's given up. I don't hear her whining anymore. You just ignore her. <laughs> Little trash can. You just ignore the dog. Eventually she'll just fall asleep. So, you know, it doesn't look, doesn't look perfect in the beginning. You just keep adding layers and stuff, building them up. Like I, I could probably spend, you know, another five, 10 hours on this or something. T 10 seems excessive, but I could spend another couple of hours on this and get it like really solid. But I like how it's uh, going. Um, they're sketching and then, I don't know if I'm using the right term, but, um, uh, I would call it rendering. This is the, uh, this is the part where you're kind of rendering your picture. You start with the initial sketch. You start adding, uh, stuff to it. And then you start rendering it out. Um... I kind of want this to be at least a little bit blue. Let's sum this up in hindsight. Not too, not too keen on this stuff being over here. I feel like the same down here. I feel like I got kind of carried away with that white stuff down there. Yeah, I think that's better, maybe. Gotta rough this in, but so like I, I believe in um Necronomicon. Yeah, that, that was the name of that uh that book, I think. Looks mythical, fetch the treasury, must have the source. Um, so I, I'm a big fan of like kind of bearing up. So like things that you really want to attract the viewer's eyes to render that out like more realistic. And then down here, you can kind of be like abstract with, um, with these lines and stuff like that. So just kind of, just kind of rough this stuff in. quickly put some of this stuff in here as well you know you don't 
spend a lot of time thinking about it and just kind of I need some definition to this guy's neck or her neck or whatever it is and just kind of quickly rough that stuff in I like doing pictures like this where it is just kind of like, you know, just having fun. You know, I'm just, I'm, I'm quickly sketching these things in here. I'm not, you know, like meticulously trying to uh, render this out in any particular way. Just having some fun drawing some marks and stuff. Let's see, I think this Yeah, we're doing okay on that. But yeah, so like, I mean, I, I mentioned this like every time I do a horse, but really this is the horse um, capital of the United States. It is so beautiful out here. I need to just drive around and take video just driving around and stuff like that to show you guys all the different horse farms out here. Um, I was pretty uh, impressed with how many horse farms they had out in Indiana when I went out there for the um, the eclipse earlier in the week. That was pretty cool. Like, I had no idea they had so many horse farms out there. But certainly here in central Kentucky, it's all horse farms. It's horse farms everywhere. And, um, you know, like even in those, uh, those whiskey bottles, like if you guys go and check out those, uh, bottles at the, uh, the whiskey wall of wonder, um, most, many, many of those bottles are horse inspired. I could have done a horse for it. And like, I'm kind of glad I didn't considering how many are horse inspired because like, I feel like that's a little cliche a bit in, in some of these things, but Gotta, gotta love horses if you're going to live around here. Um, I will actually go out and take some pictures of some horse farms because it's overdue. I need to do like a landscape picture of a horse farm for you guys. I did one, but I wasn't too happy with how it turned out. I don't know. Some of you guys might remember that one, but it was a while back. I wasn't very happy with how it turned out and... It just didn't really live up to like the kind of landscapes that I want to create. So, all right. So the type of art, I feel like I need to start focusing on, not focusing on, just to start practicing with, just because I don't do enough of it, is um, I want to do humans in some kind of like doing something form, you know, like figure figure art, but you know, humans doing stuff like I, it doesn't matter what kind of action they're doing, but they need to be doing something. Uh, Lorraine mentioned uh, yoga. So like yoga poses or something like that. I need to do that. I need to start doing some landscape pictures. And um, I think that those two things would be good for my progression. All right. See how the blue is kind of coming into the green. That's intentional. But like you don't really know where the blue ends and the green begins. You probably wouldn't find a horse like this out in the wild unless it like really, really liked to eat its greens. And it was already a blue horse or something. <laughs> I like this guy. He's pretty. You see how, like, I like drawing like this, um, with my pencil like this. I, I, most people draw like this and stuff. I don't, I don't like doing that. I, I feel like a real artist when I'm using my pencil is like, you know, almost like a knife or a paintbrush or something. Really cool. Are you guys still talking about food? <laughs> That's great. Have you, have you ever tried a Ukrainian capital salad? It's made with diced bologna, bologna, 
it's always so hard for me to pronounce that. Bologna, uh, potatoes, sweet peas, mayo, mustard, dill, and other seasonings. That sounds great. Man, you guys are making me hungry, seriously. Once I'm done with this, I'm going to go eat another pizza. Um, where's my light green? There we go. I like this light green kind of being the highlight through here. And then I can get that blue in here. Yeah, that looks cool. Thanks. Yeah, so I, I think what I'm trying to illustrate here is that you don't really need to, just because you like see a brown horse doesn't mean you have to draw a brown horse, you know. You can get creative. And, you know, who's to say that that horse isn't like in a field reflecting colors around it? Say it's a white horse or something and it's just reflecting colors around it. Uh, so as I, after I get done with the sketch, right? So like, I'm, I'm really happy with how things are looking here and stuff like that. Then I can kind of come in and be more like a little bit freer with this, um, you know, this thick, uh, pastel where I come in and just kind of add little, I don't know, little chunks of, uh, form. Like I really want this part to be kind of like highlighted here and I want this to kind of like you know, come up through here. Even though I already spent all this time making this dark, if I come up and add these like little highlights and, and stuff, kind of makes it look cooler, I think. And then even though this is all like green through here, um, actually that might be a cool place to add my, my accent color. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I like that. All right, even though this is green through here, I'm gonna add a few little touches of my accent color that I pre-selected as my challenge color. So like you ever watch that show, um, uh, Iron Chef where they have the, like the secret ingredient. I feel like my accent color in this uh, particular challenge is my secret ingredient. I have to incorporate the secret ingredient. And I think the proper place is the highlights over here on this hair. Maybe get a few going through here. I do like this yellow a lot. It's kind of like a yellow orange. It's hard to see. Um, but it works really well with these uh, blues and greens and so on. For those who have never used pastels, go out and pick up a set. They're really nice. Um, it's so much fun drawing with pastels. Uh, it, it, it's like drawing with charcoal, except that you got color, right? Um, it's like painting, except that you don't have to clean your brushes. <laughs> you get like a little tip over here on this ear. That's cool. Yeah. Maybe like little areas that are catching the light. Um, a little bit through here. I do feel like I could introduce some pink here and get away with it. Kind of like less is more, I think. I don't want to get crazy. Yeah, so I don't want that to be so yellow. I want to work that yellow into a white there and kind of make a solid mess out of it. Yeah, that's cool. 
I love soft pastels because you can make layers like this um, where they work over each other. And that kind of got has this like lemony yellow sun kind of look to it. All right, so what I noticed though is um, getting pretty close to being done here, but uh, I do notice that this, this is too much of a straight line. So the way you fix that is you kind of come back with like a really darker color and you can kind of like put in like a, little, like a hairline essentially. Kind of work that into the other areas of the main and so on. Um, I, oftentimes with these like expressive drawings, like what I've got going on here, um, it's a it's a lot about a suggestion. So I'm just suggesting, suggestioning, <laughs> suggesting a hairline essentially. This is main. Probably bring that up across a little bit longer. Yeah. Because, like, what you wouldn't want is, like, this weird, like, straight line for no reason. Straight lines don't really exist in nature. They're all curved. Random. So on. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Scared the shit out of the dog. <laughs> Just knocked my, uh, my pencil set. So I like this. I think this is looking really cool. What do you guys think? Is it looking like a horse, a colorful horse? I do think that um, maybe I can introduce a little bit of blue. This ear over here. Get like a little bit of a white line across the top. All right, so I think I think I'm mostly happy with this eyeball over here. So you might have seen that show. Um, oh, hey, you guys are actually answering my question. Uh, okay, Larry says, Jeremy, the, the horse looks majestic. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Lorraine says, uh, looks neat. Uh, Tom says, I love this horse. Um, kid says, uh, beautiful horse. Oh, it sounds good. Awesome. I was about to change subject. I was going to ask you guys, has anybody seen that show, um, Shogun on FX? I wanted to start watching that and I've heard some pretty good things. Um, I love like Japanese culture and, um, I think that's going to be a good show. I just finished uh, watching Fargo. I finally got around to watching uh, Fargo, the new season, the newish season. It was so good. I like John Hamm just in general. Uh, I liked him ever since he, uh, he was in Mad Men. And um, basically anything he's in, I'll watch. He's, he's such a funny guy too. Like he does these draw, dramatic um, roles and stuff like that, but he also does like really funny stuff um he's been on curb your enthusiasm a couple of times he, he's just a hilarious guy call carl goddard Gar <laughs> sorry carl says uh hi from uh carlinville illinois hey that's cool welcome to the channel uh carl um if this is your first time here uh consider subscribing so that i can uh you know let you know when there's new ones um, I basically do a live stream every Tuesdays and Thursdays, and uh, it's it's usually pretty much this. Um, I just draw something or paint something that I think is cool, and uh, just sit and chill with the audience and just chat and stuff. Pretty good, uh, solid group. Like most of the people in here, well, everybody in here is super nice. Uh, I haven't met anybody who's got like an attitude or anything like that. If they did, I'd probably boot them, but I haven't had to. It's It's been so cool. But welcome aboard. Appreciate it. Mm. Pimento cheese on burgers. That sounds good, actually. What's your opinion of Fargo Season 2? Which one was Season 2? Um, crap. It's been a while since Season 2. I don't remember what was the... Uh... I know... Season three, I think, had Chris Rock. 
What season are we on now? What season did I just watch? Um, I think season two was the one with um, uh, Ewan McGregor. Uh, that was okay. That was pretty good, actually. Uh, now that I recall, so that one was okay. I didn't. I didn't really like the one with Chris Rock. Um, it, it was kind of like a little dry and boring. I think it was okay. I watched it. I made it through. Uh, it wasn't my favorite. Um, I like this new season. It was pretty good. First season was the best, obviously. It's like True Detective. First season was the best. Um, I think something about aliens. Oh, man, I can't even remember that. Obviously, it didn't make, it, make an impression on me. Um, I'd say give it a shot, and, and, and like if you don't like it, just quit it. I can't. I, I don't remember it well enough to like recommend it or not. Um, the new season's pretty good, though. Uh, the other thing, the other thing I'm watching is, uh, you know, on the animation uh, front is uh, X Men '97. It is so good. It's so good. Like, I know that not everybody's of the age that I am, where you guys grew up with watching X Men back in the day and stuff. It's like your Saturday morning cartoons, um, but I did. And um, the reboot of the show is so spot on. Like, it, it's such a good um, reboot that um, I'm pretty happy with it. So if uh, anybody is into, like, animated shows and stuff. Well, if you're into animated shows, you can, you should go watch uh, Spider-Verse. That's actually my recommendation. But if, if, um, if, if you're just casually into, like, animated shows and you remember X-Men from back in the day, I can definitely recommend X Men ninety seven. It's, it's really good. I enjoy it. I don't know about this neck over here. I feel like I need to work on that a little bit. We doing all the time. Yeah, I think we're getting close to being done on this guy. I don't want it to be overworked. the The whole point of this guy is that he's supposed to look loose, and you know, you're you're supposed to see that this guy is drawn. Uh, it, it's not supposed to be like, you know, you're not supposed to confuse this guy with like a photograph or anything like that. He's supposed to look hand drawn. There you give a uh, blue Stilton cheese a try. You won't be disappointed. Get swapping recipes again. I'm telling you, man, we need to get like a recipe chain going. So what I need to do. I feel like this guy looks enough like the Joker that I need to like <laughs> put in some pink lips <laughs> and call him Joker horse. Okay, Larry's taking off. Have a good one. Yeah, I think we're wrapping this up anyway. Um, uh, I don't want to overwork it. I think it. I think it, uh, it. It accomplishes the goal I set out, which is like a uh, picture with some color. Again, if you look at my uh, my my wall, it's mostly monochromatic pictures, pictures in black and white, and so on. Um, so I just wanted to introduce like a little bit of color. And now, in fact, now that I have some color in there, I am going to get a little crazy with it. And I did want to kind of like I don't know, just introduce some like pink every like because why not, right? Like, this is our picture. It, it's nobody else's. We're not sharing it with anybody. We're not hanging in a gallery. It's not going up on auction or any of that stuff. This is our picture for ourselves. So if we want to introduce a little bit of pink, just to say that we did. Because I think pink really works well with these colors. Why not, right? Or as Bob Ross would say, you know, it's your, it's your, it's your world. Decorate it the way you want it. Which I actually think that this pink is looking really cool. Is like a little accent color here and there. Get a little bit of using it almost as like a, uh, like a transitional mid tone. I think that looks really cool. Have a good evening, uh, Lorraine. Yeah, I think I'm I'm, I'm going to wrap this up, but I wanted to uh, get some of this little pink in here a little bit. I think it looks best over on the blue side. So, like, you have this cool side over here. 
That's a good area for this pink. And then all right, the um, this side's like much warmer with the uh, the greens and the yellows and and so on. Get some it's like a rainbow horse. What colors is it missing from the rainbow? Do you imagine having hair that's like this color, like where it's blue and green and so on? I've seen some girls with that. All right. I do think that, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and call this done. Um, it's getting kind of late. You guys have to uh, you have work and school and stuff like that tomorrow. But I'm pretty happy with this horse. I think it looks cool. Uh, it accomplished the goal that it, goals that I wanted it to where we're introducing some color. Maybe, maybe like a little... A little bit of a highlight here in the eye. Yeah, I like that. That's kind of cool. Just catching the light a little bit. All right. Very cool. All right. Yeah. So, um, you know, I I don't know what they got, call this guy. He's not really a rainbow horse. He's more like a uh, um, like a sherbert kind of horse. Like not a rainbow, but more like a. Uh, yeah, Carl. Hey, man. Anytime you uh, show up, you're always welcome. Everybody is like, uh, honestly, we're just we're a small group of people who like to get together and I draw pictures and you guys just hang out and talk, chat and stuff like that. Most of the people in the room, you guys all know each other. Some of you guys are friends and, and um, you know, you guys chat amongst yourselves and stuff. So, Carl, anytime you hang out with us, you're in, you're in good company. Um, so I think this guy is more of a. Um, a sherbert kind of a horse not quite a rainbow but definitely um like if you were thinking of like ice cream or something it's definitely a sherbert but all this talk is just making me hungry all right so i think that's it for me tonight hopefully you guys enjoyed this hopefully this was a little bit different where we did um you know something outside of our comfort zone um but yeah uh so i am going to um try to get that video together about the um the maker's mark bourbon bottles whiskey wonder wall whatever uh together and um i'm gonna try to post that up tomorrow at some point i'm not really sure when uh it may actually be saturday before i can get to it but i'm gonna try to post it up tomorrow because i, I think the auction ends on saturday so i want it up there before then just so that you guys can uh get get kind of a sense of like what i got to see today when i went down there and i saw all these beautiful bottles that people painted um i mean some of the artists in this town they're just phenomenal like i i i look up to them with greatest admiration they're just awesome um so i'm gonna put that video together uh hopefully tomorrow and uh post up and um <laughs> kevin's like go eat pizza Yes, sir. Uh, I need to get with you, Kevin, about painting that uh, that other thing. And uh, I'll send you an email about that tomorrow morning. Um, but anyway, I, I think that's it for me. Uh, I'll catch you guys later. Uh, hopefully you guys had a good time. I'll see you guys on Tuesday, uh, except for that video that I'll post at some point uh, this weekend. So anyway, bye. Have a good one. See you guys.